Harry, it's been uh, quite a long winter away from Trent Bridge this year, plenty of competitions around the world. What was it that made you want to test yourself in franchise cricket this winter? Um, I think it's something that I've toyed with uh, for quite a while now over the years and then never really committed to actually doing it. And I made a decision one game last year, we were on a bus on the way back from a T20 game and I was chatting to Tom Moores about it. Um, and... Um, you know, he just said, "Why don't you just, why don't you just go for it?" And um, for whatever reason, I, I hadn't up until that point. I think the previous winter, I had the birth of my son, and I'd, I would have had an opportunity to go to Bangladesh, but turned it down because of the birth of my son. And, uh, so I, uh, halfway through last summer, signed with a, a new agent, Insignia Sports, who were instrumental really in in getting me involved in all the competitions I went to. Quite a triumphant winter as well, starting with the uh, the T10 competition, winning it with the Northern Warriors. Um, how do you prepare for a 10-over game as opposed to a 20-over one? That's a very short space of time to try and execute your skills in. Yeah, I mean, your preparation is pretty similar, to be honest. Uh, from a tactical perspective, I think um, you go to death skills sooner than you would do in a T20 game. And therefore, when it comes to preparation, you probably are focusing a lot more on those death skills. But frankly, for myself anyway, um, I tend to focus during my preparation for, for games of T20 cricket, mainly on death skills anyway, because uh, they're the ones that are going to generally um, stand you in good stead. I think particularly playing somewhere like Trent Bridge, you need those defensive skills. Quite a quick tournament as well, really, the entire competition taking place in only a week and a half or so. Mm. Is it easy to get into the, the dressing room camaraderie in such a short space of time? Yeah, it is. You'd be surprised. You know, it was, um, we had some good fun. It was, as you say, a short, sharp competition great fun you know Dubai's a, a great place and you've got a team hotel with all eight franchises staying in the same hotel and there were quite a lot of English guys there as well so we had some fun and um, you know you spend time around the pool talking about cricket and, and that kind of stuff and um, a couple of beers in the evening at the right time and it was a it was a good experience it was a good introduction really to franchise life for me and um, a good start to the winter I guess a good uh, sort of build up to the to the probably bigger T20 competitions that are subsequently played in. Yeah, and straight into those uh, with the BBL and playing for Melbourne Renegades. I mean, the, the crowd's in the final of 40,000 plus. What's that like to play in front of? Yeah, it's amazing. You know, it's, um, I've always said I much prefer playing in front of big crowds than uh, an empty stadium and playing on TV rather than not on TV, despite the extra sort of pressure and scrutiny that comes with that. Um, I think as a, as a professional sportsman, you, you tend to thrive on that. So, um, you know, pl just, play, just to play in a game of the magnitude of the Big Bash final um, is something that uh, was probably beyond my sort of wildest dreams earlier on in my career. And having admired that competition from afar for so long, to actually feature in it and, and perform well in it and go on and, and get a winner's medal was really, really special. Some big performances in those last couple of games as well from Dan Christian, who's going to pop back to wear this shirt later this year. How is he looking? Is he still in the, the form we've seen him in here at Trent Bridge over the past few years? Yeah, I mean, he, he, he looked as destructive, if not more. Um, and he's bowling well as well, which is always a, a bonus for us. So um, excited to get Dan back over. And as you say, some instrumental roles from Dan during that competition. And um, he hits a big ball. So on uh, these smaller county, English county grounds, I'm sure he'll be destructive again. From there, you, were, you went over to the Pakistan Super League, uh, which was maybe a slightly different experience from a playing point of view, not getting quite as much game time. Mm. Is that something that um, is more difficult to deal with, being away from home? How do you manage yourself out there? I guess it probably is in the sense that it makes time pass slightly slower. So at that point in the winter, my family went home. Uh, my wife and son were with me in Australia. They came actually to the Pakistan Super League for the first week or so in Dubai. Then they flew home and from then on I was sort of on my own. So, um, and as you say, not playing a little bit frustrating and, and makes time pass a little bit slower. But at the same time, you know, after um, playing in the second half of the Big Bash and, and going through some quite intense games there, I guess from a physical and mental perspective, um, that wasn't a disaster. It gave me a little bit of a break before the IPL in, in some ways. That's not to say that I wasn't training hard and, and ready for if the call came, but... Um, Unfortunately, during that competition, I found myself behind um, Dwayne Bravo, who's obviously a hell of a bowler and fulfills a pretty similar role to me in, in teams with the ball. So um, there were no hard feelings in that regard. It was, uh, it was nice to be part of a strong squad. Which one of the, uh, the triumphs over the winter gave you the most satisfaction? 
Uh, oh, definitely the Big Bash. Um, you know, T10 was T10 was great fun, but as you say, it was only sort of a two-week competition and um, didn't feature overly heavily. Um, and PSL we won, but I only played in one game. So um, to have featured in ten games for the Melbourne Renegades and to have put in personal performances, you know, winning the Man of the Match award along the way and um, playing a key role in in precious situations, that's what sort of I I live for and. Um, to lift the trophy at the end of that was very, very special, and also to have my uh, wife and son there as well, and have my little boy sat in the uh, trophy at the end was uh, a special moment. Sat in the trophy. Yeah, <laughs> very nice.